Okay, uh, good afternoon. Uh, today I'd like to announce further progress in the establishment of a Royal Commission of Inquiry following the earthquakes in Canterbury. Cabinet has agreed on two names to sit as commissioners with the Chair Justice Mark Cooper. The two people I will recommend will be appointed as commissioners are Sir Ron Carter and Associate Professor Richard Fenwick. Uh, their appointments, once confirmed by the Governor-General, mean the Royal Commission will be able to call on their experiences in analysis, problem solving and engineering. Sir Ron Carter has a considerable background in the engineering sector as a former Managing Director of Becker Carter Hollings and Ferner Limited and is currently a Director of Rugby New Zealand 2011 and the Rural Equities Limited. He has extensive governance experience, including chairing the Civil Aviation Authority and has led a number of high profile reviews, including the 1999 review on the management of New Zealand's borders and Auckland's water shortages. He is a distinguished fellow of the Institution of Professional Engineers. Richard Fenwick is an adjunct associate professor in civil engineering at the Can University of Canterbury. He is a leader in the field of earthquake engineering and is internationally renowned for his work in the design of seismic resistance reinforced concrete structures. He was awarded a companion of the New Zealand Order of Merit in 2010 for services to engineering. The Royal Commission's terms of reference have also been finalised. The Commission will be supported administratively by the Department of Internal Affairs and the Minister responsible will be the Attorney General Chris Finlayson. The terms of reference will require the Commission to look at two major areas. First, an inquiry into buildings in the Christchurch CBD, looking specifically at what factors lead some buildings to fail severely, why some buildings' failure caused extensive injury and death, and why buildings differed as to the extent to which they failed and caused injury or death. That will mean looking at, amongst other things, the characteristics of buildings which may have led to failure, for example age, location, and whether buildings conform to earthquake risk best practice. The second major area the Royal Commission will inquire into is legal and best practice requirements. It will look at the adequacy of current legal and best practice requirements for the design, construction and maintenance of buildings in central business districts in New Zealand. The Royal Commission will report back by the 11th of April 2012 that will also uh, release an interim report after six months. The interim re report will contain interim recommendations that inform early decision making on rebuilding and repair work. The final report will present findings on the matters I have outlined as well as the Royal Commission's recommendations for firstly, one, any measures necessary or desirable to prevent or minimise the failure of buildings in New Zealand due to earthquakes, secondly, uh, the costs of those measures and thirdly, the adequacy of legal and best practice requirements for building, design, construction and maintenance in as far as those requirements apply to managing risks of building failure caused by earthquakes. Just moving on to another topic, I'm also announcing today my up and coming visit to the United Kingdom and France. As you are aware, this visit follows the cancellation of, of planned trips to Europe in September last year and March of this year due to the Canterbury earthquakes. During my visit, I will attend pre Anzac Day services in France and spend Anzac Day itself uh, at a series of commemorations in London, including the dawn service at Hyde Park. While in London, I will meet British Prime Minister David Cameron, and I'm looking forward to talks with him and other members of the British Coalition Government. The trip will help cement the close government-to-government -government links we have with the UK. New Zealand's relationship with the UK is a deep one, built on strong ties between our people and our businesses and our shared outlooks. In London, I will also give impetus to the Christchurch Earthquake Appeal, and I'll attend a private audience with Her Majesty uh, the Queen, as well as meet His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales. These engagements have been rescheduled from the two earlier cancelled visits. I'll also be travelling to Paris to meet with President Sarkozy and other senior government representatives for formal talks. New Zealand has a wide-ranging relationship with France and I look forward to discussing our cooperation in the Pacific and in Europe and on G20 issues uh, as France prepares to host the next Leaders' Summit. The trip will be uh, complemented, uh, sorry, completed with uh, when I attend with my wife Brona the Royal uh, Wedding of His Royal Highness Prince William and Catherine Middleton at uh, Westminster Abbey. 
Um, as you're probably aware, uh, Petrobras has been granted a five-year license to carry out seismic exploration work in the Rokamara Basin. They are a few days into a 60-day program, but have been the subject of protests from Greenpeace and others. New Zealand is a democracy where we, 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 we respect people's rights to protest, but we also respect the rights of other people to carry out legal activities like Petrobras is. The police are currently exploring all of their options and the Minister is getting advice uh, on the activities. The Government is conscious of environmental issues and we are in the process of introducing legislation that will address environmental concerns for deep sea wells. It is the Government's view that we can balance those environmental concerns with the desire of a great many New Zealanders to create better jobs and better incomes. There's been some debate in recent days about the level of New Zealand's incomes. The government remains committed to closing the wage gap with Australia. A significant amount of Australia's higher wages actually come from their ability to harness minerals, and it's important we don't cut off every option that would help us close that gap. In terms of the House this week, when the House resumes tomorrow, the government intends to go into urgency uh, to introduce and pass legislation to respond to the Canterbury earthquake. The government will also look to make further progress uh, on bills on the order paper. In terms of ministerial activity, my activity this week, tomorrow and Wednesday I'm in Wellington, on Thursday I'm in Christchurch and on Friday I'm in Rotorua and on Saturday I'll be at the V8 supercar event in Hamilton. Finally, a word about the good work the Chief Science Advisor, Professor Sir Peter Gluckman, is doing in his role. Last week he released a report on science education for the 21st century. Today he released a discussion paper on the better use of evidence in policy formation. I think it will be of some interest, especially to public service leaders seeking to improve the quality of public ad uh, policy advice. It will be available on the website www.pmcsa.org.nz from today. So